Hey guys, in this video we've got some key students to have a chat to you about how you can develop an interest in your subject. Hi, I'm Daphne. I'm a first year doing history at Keys. I think the best way to figure out what about your subject interests you the most is to start with something basic. Don't jump in at the deep end because that might scare you off. It might be a bit um, a bit demoralising to <laughs> start reading something that doesn't interest you because it was too broad or too to this or to that. Just start basic. Um, for example, I tried to read a 600 page economic history that just did not interest me in the slightest and that almost put me off. Um, but luckily, luckily I took a different route after that. So my A-level, for example, was the French Revolution and Napoleon, one of my topics. Uh, and my teacher mentioned in passing one of the lessons that Napoleon deposed the King of Spain and that caused a series of revolutions in South America. Um, and she just mentioned that in passing, but I heard it. And as someone who was also studying Spanish, I thought I have to learn more about that. So then I went away and I read things, I watched documentaries, I listened to podcasts, and I found out that was something that really interested me. So keep your eye out for something that interests you that might not be part of your course and be willing to explore that. Hey, I'm Carla and I study human social political sciences. Reading a podcast or YouTube videos even, no matter how irrelevant you might think it is or how niche it is. Um, this is how I developed an interest in my subject without really even realising. I realised I was enjoying history level and there was certain, it was like a certain text that came up or a certain person that came up that I was like, okay, this is quite interesting. I just look at them in a bit more depth when I got home and um, just through like a YouTube video or through Googling them and seeing what came up. And you know, once you do that, obviously, if you watch like a YouTube video, recommended stuff or related stuff will come up. So it starts to connect you to others in that area. So it, it what might be like an initial interest can then broaden out into maybe a subject area or maybe to a wider range of people and some things you can read that you hadn't even come across before or knew like it was really there that you were interested in. Um, I know that can be, especially reading around your subject can be quite hard to do, especially if you're working as well as studying. Um, but that's why I suggest even if it's like a podcast in the evening or a YouTube video here and there, or you're going on holiday and you take a book from the library in or related to this area of interest, um, just little bits here and there gradually adds up. Hi, I'm Ella and I'm going into my third year studying philosophy at Keys. So my top tip for developing an interest in your subject would definitely just be reading. Obviously, it depends very much whether you're doing a humanities or a science subject, but for humanities subjects, I think that reading around the subject and finding out what you're actually interested in rather than what you think you should be interested in, or like figuring out what the course is like and just trying to, I don't know, go through the reading list, uh, that those aren't sort of the best options and the best is to just figure out what you really care about and what you really enjoy learning more about and then that will sort of more authentically uh, take you on the on the path to learning more and caring more about your subject. Uh, so especially for subjects like philosophy where you might not have studied it beforehand, the department uh, website, so the faculty website for your subject at Cambridge, uh, can be really helpful for getting tips of what to read. So they might have some more background stuff and it will just give you an idea of what you'll be reading once you get to Cambridge uh, so that you can see whether you're actually interested in the course and also just get more of a guide uh, for, for what you should be reading because there is so much out there. Um, it also doesn't make a massive difference whether or not you've studied it before. So I say that's a good guide for people who haven't, but equally it is for people who have, uh, because once you get here, the sort of stuff that you're studying and the depth that you're studying it in is just so different. So I wouldn't worry about that sort of disparity. Uh, but yeah, happy reading. Hi, my name's Dan. I've just finished my second year studying maths at Keys. Reading can also be useful for science subjects, but maybe in smaller doses and it's a bit harder to know where to get started. So one thing I'd recommend is if you found something really interesting on an online video or lecture or something you've seen, then uh, maybe look for something to read in that area. One piece of advice I got was never to read a mathematics book without a pencil in your hand, um, because authors tend to re leave a lot to, for you to flesh out and to understand the detail and some exercises to do. Uh, and you can start to get quite lost if you just find yourself taking the author's word for too much without doing it yourself. So as a result it'll be quite a lot slower reading a maths book than it would be reading a fiction book. 
but you've got to remember the aim of this is to find something new and interesting for you, a little something uh, that you can sort of be passionate about rather than try and teach yourself a whole university course because obviously you're going to university to learn the university material. So um, it's just smaller doses and small chapters can be much more valuable if you understand them well than glazing over whole books. Uh, two good topic areas maybe to start with might be set theory or number theory because uh, they're both quite different from A-level, uh, but you can get going with them quite quickly because they don't require too much high-level stuff. Hi, I'm Maddie and I study medicine. I would personally recommend choosing a topic that you already have a little bit of interest in um, because it allows you to absorb the facts much more easily because you kind of already have that interest so you're more willing to learn. So I personally had an interest in genetics um, and I read My Beautiful Genome by Lone Frank and uh, Genome by Matt Ridley and I found these really interesting um, and it's kind of like a good way of seeing the kind of depth that you go into in medical school and any facts you pick up from them you can use in your interviews and you can talk about on your personal statement. Hi I'm Maya, I'm a third year history student. Don't feel like you have to look at certain areas of history or read certain books just because some people have done them already. It's far more important you can show a genuine interest in periods of history and that you are passionate about. So if it's taking you 20 days to read 20 pages of a really boring book, you've got like 500 pages left. Probably not worth continuing with it unless you think it's really, really beneficial to you. Far better to look at things that interest you, just because your genuine passion for the subject will definitely come across. Hi, I'm Grace and I study law at Keys. The first thing I'd say is to listen to podcasts or radio shows about law, such as Law in Action, which is on BBC Radio 4. It's accessible online with loads of back versions of it. It deals with things from international law um, issues to more domestic I'd really recommend it. It covers a wide range of issues and it's actually really interesting and accessible. I'd also recommend doing quite a lot of reading. Um, it's not completely necessary, but I think it stands you in really good stead. I'd recommend books like Letters to a Law Student and What About Law as a basic understanding. They introduce you to a lot of ideas that you'll deal with during your law degree. But then go further, find books that you might like. I liked Michael Mansfield Memoirs of Radical Lawyer in particular. Hi everyone, I'm Podrick and I'm about to be a second year studying Anglo-Saxon, Norse and Celtic at Gonville and Keys. There's also an introductory reading list on the official ASNAG website run, run by, the, uh, by the ASNAG department and you can take a look at that. Now those introductory reading lists, I have to warn you, they are a bit long, it's not obligatory, but if you want to develop an interest in your subject, obviously that's a good place to start. There's some central books in ASNAC such as Bede's Historica Ecclesiastica, uh, there's the Mabinogion if you're interested in Welsh literature, the Tom Volcunia if you're interested in Irish literature, uh, then there's the Scandinavian sagas, the Icelandic sagas, uh, old English poetry, and the corpus of literature is massive and obviously on the other hand you have history where you can look at um, also sagas in your, if you're interested in, uh, in Scandinavian history but then annals, different historical records, chronologies, uh, genealogies uh, and the best thing is that there's so much of readily available online. I know this might sound quite overwhelming with um, the the, the the general scope of ASNAC, but if you do have a general idea of where your interests lie or where, where you might be headed in the next then three years of the course, that's definitely a good idea. But equally, if it doesn't interest you once you've looked in it, into it a little bit further, don't be afraid to give up on something that doesn't interest you. First of all, think critically about why it doesn't interest you or why what you read or the format that you absorbed that information in was uh, was unhelpful for you in your learning journey or in that topic specifically um, and use that to redirect you towards something better. If it's that you read something but you disagree with the perspective of the author or uh, just the topic in general doesn't interest you, think critically and then move on and don't stress too much about wasted time because you can't waste time developing an interest in your subject. Everything will help you towards understanding what you do and don't enjoy, and that's the main thing. Hi, my name is Jem Wickham and I'm just heading into my third year of Classics at Keys. 
Something that I found really useful when trying to flesh out interest in my subject was going to free lectures. So for example at the British Museum. And something that I would really recommend doing is going up to the lecturer afterwards and having a chat with them. More often than not, from my experience, they'll be more than happy to chat about any questions that you might have had during the talk, their interests and your interests as well. And this is great for three main reasons. So for starters, passion is completely contagious. Secondly, if you don't have any experience talking to an academic um, before interview, this is a really good opportunity to. Um, and also, they can really help give you a sense of direction in terms of what your passions might be and what you might like to research, where your niche might lie, um, by raising more questions and giving you a chance to go and research them. I also did a mini medical series which was at my local university. So these are like eight hour lectures, eight one hour lectures, and you could, they were about sort of introductions to aspects of medicines, they were just really interesting and allowed you to see what medical school was kind of going to be like. I went to see the dissection room, I got to see the cadavers, I got to try, try out some kind of practical skills. Um, there was one where you had to do like piling sugar cubes under a microscope and also hear about things from the students who were there. I think one of the strongest bits was my section Anglo-Saxon history, which I never studied before at school because my year seven course started in 1066. And I started first of all by reading Wikipedia and entering an essay competition, which I didn't do very well in, but it was really helpful because it showed me that I wasn't interested in the 700 year period of history as a whole, but I was far more interested in material evidence such as coinage. So I researched more about coinage. I arranged to meet an expert in numismatics, the study of coins from a museum, which I thought was probably one of the things that I was most pleased with. Now, some people went to museums, to archaeological sites. Uh, people went to the British Library. That's one side of things. Obviously, if you can't, if you can't go there because you don't have the time or money, uh, there's other ways. Uh, another, another person in Aznak, uh, they asked their history teacher to supply them with articles uh, from med medieval history and they just had it had a discussion every single week about the article they had read. I think if you can it might be useful to get a practical involvement in your interest area so I'm thinking this can only broaden your interest out and it can help you understand okay am I just enjoying this as like an academic thing? Is this something I enjoy putting into practice more? Could this be possibly a career path? I'd suggest maybe looking around your local area. So it might not be amazingly advertised, but through talking to friends or friends of friends, family members, um, or maybe your college or school has like a student services or a place where they'll put flyers as to what's going on. Through doing that, you might find some form of volunteering or Something you can get involved in that you find interesting that could make a new interest for you or it links to what you're already finding interesting and can you can develop that a bit further. Problem solving is a really important area of mathematics and you need to know that you can build up your stamina to think about problems for 10 minutes and then half an hour and then even longer for really challenging problems. So one good place to start is with the AMT, a mathematics charity whose maths challenges you may have had the pleasure of having a go at in the past. There's plenty of previous versions of them on their website. Uh, and they also do some books uh, which are really accessible, don't require too deep a knowledge base, but introduce you to a new topic area like uh, combinatorics or inequalities or geometry puzzles uh, and walk you through a couple of problems on those to really develop your problem solving skills. Build up your stamina perhaps if you're feeling really up for a challenge, have a go at some of the Olympiad style problems as well. Uh, the same goes for other science subjects, uh, Olympiad papers are available online, even if your school doesn't run them you can have a go at them on there for physics and chemistry. Uh, and there are some biology challenge papers available as well. Medicine work experience is quite a big thing. So there are hospitals, GPs and volunteering. Now hospitals are really really hard to get into so if you know someone then just ask them because that's the easiest route in but you can also apply. So I applied for the scheme where I live but I actually didn't get a place so I have no hospital work experience. Um, you can also apply for GP practices. So I emailed about 30 to 40 GPs in my area, of which only three replied and two said no. So I did two days work experience at that GP that said yes. 
and it allowed me to see the environment. I was able to work on the desks and um, also view the patient consultations as well as go on some home visits. Uh, volunteering you can do at hospices, at care homes, in hospitals. There's a load of things that you can do. Now I rang loads of care homes and none of them wanted my help so it is quite hard to get in. Um, I managed to get a place at um, a palliative care hospice near me and I did about a year and a half worth of um, work there. I was not doing any hands-on experience, just serving meals, but it allowed me to get a relationship with patients, talk to patients, talk to nurses and staff who were there and see what the environment was like. There obviously are some difficulties at the moment with getting work experience, which is another thing I'd usually recommend due to Corona. But I'd say just because you can't do it doesn't mean you can't show your interest in other ways. There are things like social media you can engage on. There's Cam Tweet Law is a Twitter account run by a Cambridge lawyer. The dyslexic lawyer is also very interesting. And along with other YouTubers that you can look up that will give you an idea of what studying law at Cambridge might be like, but also what law is like as a whole. There are also like a lot of online resources. So quite a lot of medical schools are doing online um, kind of training days, that kind of thing. And there's also a lot of people who are on Instagram, on YouTube, providing videos and talking about their experiences in med school, which are really useful because you can just see what it's like and kind of get the idea and feel for it. Now, obviously, you don't have to choose the papers right away, but have a look at them and see what strikes your fancy. There's history papers alongside literature papers. Obviously with the literature comes the language as well. In ASNAC you can borrow from history, you can borrow from archaeology, uh, MML, linguistics uh, and a few others I think. Uh, and you have everything, every single paper has its own respective bibliography that you can you know pursue if you so wish. Because more, I'm more of a language <laughs> more of a language driven person i looked at different uh, different grammars uh and i i looked at the grammar of old english and i tried to compare the grammar of old english to to modern english uh obviously being a native irish speaker i tried to combine or rather compare different aspects of modern irish to to old irish grammar I would also recommend that you read um, that you read newspapers and um, the news so you know what's going on in the world. It's very good to have a knowledge of politics and history going into law interviews, but also you'll find that law interacts with in society in lots of different ways, and you can find yourself developing an interest in how, for international, inter for example, international law or human rights law. I'd also say have a look at Public Law for Everyone. It's a very accessible blog run by Mark Elliott, who's one of the professors of Cam at Cambridge Law Faculty. It's very easy. It deals with big cases so dealt with the, in the Supreme Court. Look at your subject as a whole. Look at your subject and think about it and reflect on what it's like as, as an academic discipline. So, for example, with history, I try to think about how history has been conceptualised over time, which sounds really fancy, but um, what I did mainly was read Niall Ferguson's introduction to his book, Virtual History, which I found was a really good starting point because it talked about different ways in which historians have thought about history over time, the different ways in which they've argued that events link to each other as well. Another thing to look at is definitely at the Asnac Society website. Now, as being the access officer for uh, next year, so for next year incoming freshers, uh, it is my responsibility to also spread information about uh, our society and the website that we run. And we can find a plethora of information there. You've got uh, Q and A's, so questions that many, many ASNAC students will ask. I think more than anything else, it's key to really develop genuine passions, follow your interests and your gut, um, and make sure you have an opinion on everything that you've researched. I hope there's been some useful advice here for you on developing an interest in your subject. Uh, even if your subject wasn't explicitly mentioned, I hope some of the more general points have been useful for you. Um, still feel free to ask any remaining questions you have in the comments here, and do look out for our other videos on preparing for interview and other ones just to give you a bit more of a sense of what life is like here at Key.